alternative assets and uh, has traditionally been um, sort of illiquid and, and hard to hard to get rid of. My name is Thomas McInerney. I'm the Chief Product Officer at Open Finance. So Open Finance Network is the first to market regulated security token trading platform. Uh, we're fully regulated by FINRA and the SEC and we tra uh, trade mostly in alternative assets. So alternative assets is a $7.7 .7 trillion industry. Things like real estate, private equity, venture capital. These things are traditionally very illiquid and hard to trade, but by tokenizing them, we can make them accessible to everybody and bring the clearing and settlement time down to just a few seconds. So we have a lot of um, primary issuance partners, people like Tokensoft, Harbor, Polymath, Securitize, and these guys are doing um, primary offerings on-chain or tokenizing existing assets by employing a number of different standards that they have. So we've, we've worked with just about eight different security token standards now. A lot are, are coming out and, and continue to develop, but they all sort of follow this uh, same kind of model of on-chain or off-chain compliance baked into the token. So you have basically a permission layer, we're calling them permission tokens, trading um, with us that are a little bit different than your standard ERC-20 tokens out there, the utility token model. Some of them, yeah, that's one of the, that's one of the uh, standards we're looking at. This, uh, one of our partners, Abacus Protocol, does a lot of 721s. These are not as popular as, as uh, um, fungible tokens. Traditionally, securities are uh, more popular when they're divisible and fungible. So we, but we've seen a couple of different, uh, very interesting use cases. For instance, um, let's take a piece of artwork where you can securitize the uh, value and and the appreciation of, of the artwork, but uh, the, the value appreciation. And then the ownership can be tokenized in the 721. So this is, um, we, we've, we actually started working on open finance uh, um, last year in September is when we first launched. And it's been a, um, a bit of an uphill battle getting the full ATS and, and uh, we, we've owned the broker dealer for a while, but um, getting the ATS up up to par for uh, where we are now took uh, took about nine months. Um, generally, the regulators have been pretty uh, pretty open to, to what we have to say, and, and they're actually working with us closely. So they have not just said no, which is great. They've um, they've been open to, to hearing what we have to offer, and they've been actually very receptive. To, to what we've uh, put in front of them. We actually presented our uh, S3, our smart security standard, which is similar to Harbor's R token or, or Polymass SC20 to them to basically give them an idea of how um, tokens, security tokens can exist and, and trade compliantly in a, a public blockchain ecosystem. So we started two years ago as CFX Markets, two or three years ago, which is a trading platform for traditional alternative assets. And we were seeing uh, clearing and settlement times of up to eight weeks. So Open Finance Network and the tokenization of these assets became the logical next step. We saw security tokens early on, such as blockchain capital, um, science blockchain, as uh, early pioneers of the security token space. and um, we were able to, to sort of jump on that uh, security token train pretty early. So we've, we launched back in July, and we've onboard, been onboarding investors, and uh, live trading starts in just a few weeks. So open finance, this, it's actually a, a common misconception that it's just for accredited investors. Open finance is open to US accredited, non-accredited, and all international investors as well. So really, the only people that can't use it are uh, North Koreans and, and, and Iranians, maybe. But uh, um, anyone on the sanction list, we, uh, it's, it's pretty cool that these, these security tokens that people, and, and especially these assets, so something like a hedge fund that someone 
might not be able to get into because they're not accredited. Security tokens allow anyone in the world to, to own a small piece. Uh, we're trying to educate the, the industry and ecosystem in general because uh, it's, people definitely think that it's, it's just for the rich to get richer and that's, that's not the case. There are some, uh, still some restrictions on the, on the first, on the primary offering, but um, after that first year, uh, anyone can, can own them. We, so far, I'd say the average uh, open finance user has um, crypto experience not coming from the traditional uh, side. I think we, that's, that's definitely our goal, is, is that's a much larger market, is to get everybody comfortable with, with crypto and token, tokenized securities, showing them how much uh, this improves the process. But you, you definitely do have um, things that you need to get people used to, such as like uh, owning a, a token wallet. Like, so we're non-custodial. You use MetaMask uh, to interact and, and then settle directly peer-to-peer -peer on chain. So this is a concept that's like really new to traditional investors and it's, it's more educating them as well to, to kind of um, get more comfortable with them. We are, we are seeing some, uh, some, it's starting to pick up. So we've got users from all over the world, accredited and non-accredited. Uh, actually, I'd say about 33 of our user base is, is US based. So most, most OFN users are abroad. And um, I, I think the, the early adopters that just, just like blockchain tech, the early adopters are people that really know the tech and have been in crypto for a while. So um, that's our first phase of, of uh, user growth. And then I think the traditional um, retail investors come on and then institutional gets comfortable with this stuff pretty quickly as uh, we start to see some real uh, awesome things get tokenized. Basically a, uh, a decentralized trading platform. We have um, off-chain order books is for performance reasons and then on-chain settlements. So by coming to open finance, you might, it might take you eight weeks sometimes and go through all these middlemen and, and have very high costs of, of transferring something like a, a REIT that you own. Um, it might be really hard to find liquidity for that, but uh, we've got that down to, to eight seconds. So we've cut out a number of middlemen um, and we're able to transfer this REIT peer to peer in just a matter of seconds, the time it takes for an Ethereum block to mine, so. Chicago. So we are, um, we're actually a bit of a centralized team. Most of us are here. We've got um, our trading desk in LA and New York is the broker dealer ATS. So we, um, we kind of, we've got a number of uh, Northwestern guys on the team. So I think that everybody, we could have sort of gravitated to Chicago, but Chicago, the Chicago scene is absolutely incredible. You have tons of smart people from, from all over the place. The Chicago blockchain scene in particular is just full of enthusiasm and passion. So it's, um, it's really hasn't been too much of an issue for us to find people that are super passionate about what we're building. And especially um, blockchain engineers are a little bit hard to come by, but uh, software engineers with, who are super willing to learn are we've found are actually been really successful in, in uh, working on the stuff that we're building. So if you go to openfinance.io, you can sign up, um, no matter, like I said earlier, who, who you are, and we are accepting everybody. The, um, we have tons of information about some of the other products on our website, such as our, our investor passport, or um, more into our, our clearing and settlement. And uh, sign up, you go through AML KYC accreditation if, if necessary, if you are, uh, but you don't need to be. And um, then, yeah, you can start trading as soon as we, uh, as soon as we kind of um, go live with, uh, with Spice, v Spice VC and BCAP are the first ones. So we're going through, being the, the first to market, uh, we've got to um, triple check everything and, and make sure it's, it's all good to go. But uh, pretty excited for that. We're, we're finding out a lot of cool things um, as we go along and, and, and speak with the 
regulators. I think one thing that I'm super excited about is the uh, Jay Carroll or Jay, Jay Clayton, the SEC uh, chairman, has said that they're looking to um, loosen up the accredited investor rules. So um, I think STOs will start to become very popular security token offerings, and that will just further increase the demand um, on uh, trading platforms for these these uh, tokenized securities. Of course, the CFTC, right? Who wants their say if if uh, if these things are commodities? And then you know, but. Um, the SEC has basically said like these things are, I think that's that's something that's pretty cool too. Like these things, they are securities when they're offered, if they're offered in this way. And most things have been at almost, I'd say 99% of ICOs from last year are, are security offerings, but that doesn't mean you can't have securities with utility. Um, so we, I think it's a very cool concept. If you make sure you do it compliantly, and then these things can actually have some utility value or, or um, you know, work as designed.